What's up, hubba hubba? There it is. Let's see. I can hear you. Look at you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can definitely see you with all those cans back there. Holy shit. Yeah, that's my that's my backdrop, Cam. My backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so cool. Hey, just right off the bat, cheers. Thanks so much for joining on I Asked No One, brother. Absolutely. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, thank you. Ooh, that's a delicious. Can I can I run and get mine? Oh, please go for it, man. Uh, thank you. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> yo, yo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he's, he's like, he's got his. I'm gonna do mine. There we go. <laughs> there you go, brother. I'm I'm a crown guy, so cheers. Right on. Cheers, bro. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> Woo. Right. Ah, delicious. We have we have hubba hubba here, uh, Darren Flotton, right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, if you call me Darren, though, I'll think you're a bill collector or something. Everybody calls me hubba. <laughs> so what's hubba hubba from? I mean, you 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 just uh, the sexy man at Seattle I Tattoo Emporium, or what? Yeah, I've been called Hubba. I'm in my 50s, Kev. So I've been called Hubba since I was about seven years old. Uh, I grew up in Poughkeepsie, New York, uh, East Coast guy. Uh, and about seven years old, I, my parents had moved to a new neighborhood. So the neighborhood kids didn't really know my name yet. So uh, I saw some pretty girls walk by and I was like, ooh, Hubba Hubba. I must have got it from a movie or something. What kind of seven-year-old kid get, where did he, could he get it from, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but everybody thought it was really funny. So they were like, hey, there's that fat kid that said Hubba Hubba. So they would be like, hey, Hubba Hubba, you know. Oh, so man. it kind of stuck and it's kind of become my, um, my professional name and my, you know, I mean, my teachers in school called me Hubba, my parents do, everybody does. So if I get a Darren, you're a bill collector or my bank, you know? <laughs> All right, Hubba Hubba. Well, dude, I just want to say uh, congratulations on 36 years this year of tattooing and 31 yes. years at the Seattle Tattoo Emporium. Which, that is true, sir. You know, the STE that opened up in 1941, that's the oldest uh, yeah. oldest tattoo establishment in America. Is that correct? Uh, arguably, there's uh, there's some older ones on the East Coast uh, that uh, say they were first, but uh, we're definitely the first in Seattle and uh, 1941, the first on the West Coast, you know, so there we have it. We got, we got some pedigree. <laughs> that is bad ass, man. Well, at the top of every episode, I'd like to start off with a little musical fact of the day. Uh, okay. Today, today's April the 8th and we got a few ah. birthdays here. Uh, Izzy Stradlin, formerly of Guns N' Roses, he turns 59 today. Happy uh, birthday. Happy birthday to the long lost gunner. And then now uh, Danita Sparks with L7. Uh, who's oh, nice. be your guest on I Ask No One? Yeah, she's turning 58. Uh, Love Elsa. Are, yeah. are, are you close to those ages? You said you're in your 50s, right? Yeah, I know. I'll be 55 this year. Okay. Yeah. Amen, Amen brother. But um, yep. you said you're from Poughkeepsie. Uh, what yep. brought you out to the West Coast? Have you ever been to Buffalo, by the way? You know, are you I haven't been to Buffalo. Um, I have not. Uh, I haven't been to every place in New York, but I grew up in the Hudson Valley. Um, I call Poughkeepsie my home because uh, that's where I moved after I left my parents' house. But I actually kind of grew up in the Hyde Park area, which is the home of, you know, Franklin D. Roosevelt and, you know, the Vanderbilt Mansion and, you know, these kind of things. It's kind of a suburb of Poughkeepsie. But uh, as soon as I was out of my parents' house, I wanted to live with my girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? So Poughkeepsie it was. <laughs> All right. And then you went to the West Coast. Were you tattooing back in Poughkeepsie or, or what brought you I out, out west, man? I was. I was tattooing at Poughkeepsie, um, and then I uh, I went through a breakup with this gal, so I was like, yeah, you know, just, I kind of want to go cross country, you know? I kind of, like, I'm young. I was young, and I wasn't even 21 yet when I left to go cross country. Wow. So I found a drive-away car, and one of these deals where, you know, a family that moves cross country, but they can't take their car, so they have you drive it, and all you do is pay for gas, and that, as long as you drop off the car, you're gold. So it's kind of like a, you know, gas money free ride you know so that's what we did i got a couple of friends to help me and we took the drive away car from poughkeepsie new york to san diego california kind of made my way up california after we dropped off the car you know i had to see la for a minute like new york much better sorry la uh, <laughs> yep. but uh you know 
and I end, actually ended up in Tucson, Arizona. I thought I was going to live in California, but it never really found its niche. Um, so I had a friend in Tucson say, hey, look, brother, come on out. We got plenty of weed and we'll start a band. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm there. You know, so <laughs> I went to Tucson and I uh, did vocals for Head Cheese for four years before I moved to Seattle. Uh, I met Jim Hillary in Tucson, and he's the owner of the Seattle Tattoo Emporium currently. Um, and he was a manager back then. This is, you know, 31 years ago or whatever. Uh, and he called me and he was like, hey, look, I, I'm working at this shop in Seattle. It's a lot of musicians are getting tattooed. You should come up and help me. Um, and I was in head cheese at the time. So I kind of shined him on for about six, eight months. I was like, yeah, I mean, we're in the studio. We're recording. I uh, can't leave. I can't leave kind of thing. And then uh, finally, I was like, you know what? I love the band. It was a lot of fun, but I, I, I was unemployed other than the band. And everyone, every musician knows if you're not making it big, you're not making a lot of scratch. So I had the opportunity to move to Seattle. I had a, I had a built-in job. I had the job before I moved here. And uh, so I, I took it, you know, I, I moved up here and I, I don't regret it. Uh, I miss the band, but that's why I DJ now. So I still kind of connected with the music, you know? <laughs> Right. But uh, yeah, tattooing every day is, 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 is fucking great. You know, <laughs> love your work, man. You, you really oh, do. Thank you. Unique work. I like your coloring. I think your coloring really stands out. Uh, oh, well, thank you. The way you yeah. fill in those lines. So, yeah, thank you, on, man. Um, so Seattle, my my good friend, Christian Lavender, he lived in Queen Anne. He lived in Ballard. Uh, I mm -hmm. lived in San Diego and Los Angeles for two years and two years. And we mm -hmm. would go up there for concerts, go skiing up there. Beautiful town, and yeah. um, two of their lost heroes, uh, Kurt Cobain and Lane Staley, actually, uh, this yeah. week, it was uh, April 5th, you know, they passed away on the on the same exact day in 94 yeah. and 2002, so yeah. I got to ask you, did you ever meet Kurt, uh, or meet, I know you did work on Jerry, oh. and we'll get to that. <laughs> Hold on, I'm sorry, messing up here, here we go. That's right. <laughs> I'm on my, I'm, on, I'm not on my desktop. I'm on my phone. So sorry about that. No um, but man. Yeah, I actually had, I, 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 uh, I've tattooed, uh, Jerry from Alice in Chains, but I, I, I met Kurt. I had, to uh, see, sometimes tattoo artists get perks, you know? So, uh, I was able to get backstage passes for, uh, Nirvana and, and the Buttle Surfers. Now the Buttle Surfers are friends of mine. They actually stayed with me in New York and, uh, New Paltz, New York when they toured, uh, in the eighties. So, um, I was mostly hanging out with the servers because they, you know, I knew them, but I was able to meet Kurt and that was a big honor for me. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, you know, uh, I shouldn't speak ill of people, but I, don't, I never really liked his wife. She was, she wasn't very friendly to me, but uh, he was super, super cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I tell people I met him and uh, they were just like, well, you know, I, I forget being an old guy, you know, like some of these kids I tell you that too, they weren't even born when he was making this music, you know what I mean? So right. it's like, oh my God, you met him? I was like, oh, oh that's right, you're 21. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn, so uh, how was the show? And, and you said he was a really nice guy. You just backstage having a beer with him or? Yeah, well, he, I mean, he had, they had a bunch of people around him as, as always, you know, backstage floating around, but um. Yeah, uh, they had um, this particular show. The host was Bobcat Goldthwait. And uh, so I was actually hanging out with him and um, he was like the designated watcher of Francis Bean, their their daughter. Right. So he was hanging out. With, I was hanging out with him and he was holding Francis. But it, it, it makes me feel super old now that I've like kind of looked her up in the Internet. And I'm like, oh, my God. She's an adult woman now. I feel so old, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, Oh, oh, come on. Oh, who we got? Sorry, there? this little bugger. He's just, uh, he uh, won't let me put him down for too long. So, what's his name? Oh, this is Peanut. Yeah, he's a, he's a special needs Yorkie. He doesn't have a bottom jaw. He kind of eats like a snake. So, it's kind of like having two pets. <laughs> hey, hey, what's up there, buddy? Yeah, you see, what's see up, him on that rock and roll podcast that Kevin's putting on. See, Woo! he asked no one, but he's asking me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my first tattoo ever, man. Guru tattoo. Oh, nice. You know, I representing. Was, that's right, man. I was 28 <laughs> years and 56 days old when I got that. And that's exactly how old James Hetfield was when they played Moscow 91. So I'm a. Oh, wow. I'm a, that's I'm a, great. Yeah. Man, isn't it, isn't it wild how things are connected? You just got to find the connection, you know? Yes. yes. Awesome. 
Yeah. I was taking a look at your work and I usually have a quote of the day, hubba hubba. And that quote okay. is uh, something that you tattooed onto an 18 year old named Anthony recently. Okay. And that quote is none of us know who we are until we fail. Ah, and really? There really we go. Like, like the work, you know, you, you had a script or something. I forget what part of his body was on, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it was, yeah, I think it was just, like, it took up his whole arm or something. You know, that was, he had just turned 18 and it was his very first tattoo. It's like the kid didn't even get a tester tattoo. He just kind of dove right in like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a half a sleeve. Okay. You know, <laughs> yeah, got to hand it to him, you know, <laughs> was it a walk-in or do you take a lot of walk-ins? I, I do take a lot of walk-ins. I'm like the walk-in slayer because uh, when other people have appointments, I'll just do them all. I don't care. I'll sit there and do them all. But uh, I do have a fair amount of appointments. And uh, um, it's 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 better for bigger pieces like that uh, to schedule an appointment because um, it just gives me the a, a lot of time to make it nice. You know what I mean? Right. I, I like a little prep time, you know, if it's a bigger piece. But on small stuff, I can usually just, you know, quickly draw it up at my desk at work and, you know, pump it out. But if it's like a an elaborate piece or a sleeve or something, uh, you know, that requires a little more drawing. I'd like to make an appointment. Definitely. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah I do like, uh, I actually took some, some pieces uh, of yours notated a few pieces here. I'm going to just pull them up. Uh, sure. You that stood out to me. So my spirit animal is a wolf and um, okay. I like, I like the simplicity of this. Is that a wolf? Oh, yeah. Is that a third yeah. eye? Or what's going on here? Yeah, it's like a little cartoon wolf with a third eye. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I dig I, it. I dig it, bro. And then, of course, you know, we were talking about Nirvana. I really like this one, oh, too. The in utero. There you go. The in utero silhouette. Yep. Yep. Nice. So awesome. And then, of course, man, and don't be afraid. If you see this face as a walk-in in the next few years or whatever, I'm next in Seattle. <laughs> uh one thing well, I gotta, well, hopefully we won't have to wear masks hopefully we'll all be vaccinated and be past this crap because uh this is hard on the hugger brother i'm a hugger it's like uh here give me an elbow mask guy you know <laughs> how about a hugger huh i'm a hugger yeah first <laughs> all right well i look forward to that hug and uh you know i also want to go to seattle to see bruce lee's burial site that's one thing i wasn't yeah. able to, to catch first time around uh, and I really like the signature that you did. Oh, yeah, the Bruce Lee signature. Yeah, that's kind of a tricky with the two colors. You know, it took a little time, but uh, I think it looks neat the way it came out. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Thank you. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah. 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 So you also you also did work on Jerry Cantrell. And uh, I did. This one uh, is going to be the thumbnail picture of our episode here. Oh, that's uh, yeah, that snapshot. The 19 you know, that's really funny because he was he was the one that he was like, oh, we should get a picture together. Hey, let me make it look like it's really hurting me. You know, because <laughs> he, he's fine. He can take it. And that was like a, you know, oh, oh, oh this, your help is killing me. But he wasn't. He was fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was, uh, was that a walk-in? Did you come in with some of the guys from Alice in Chains? How was that experience? Um, no, no. Actually, he's really good friends with, um, well, I haven't seen Rick at, in a long time, but at, at, at that time I was tattooing this cat named Rick and he was like best friends with him. So Rick was like, hey, do you mind if I bring Jerry Cantrell in? Uh, you know, we're good friends. He, um, he wants to get some work. I said, oh shit, bring him on in. I would love to meet him, you know? Uh, I said, what's he want? And the whole thing with uh, the work that I've done on Jerry is I was redoing something that he got on tour that he was unhappy with. Like, so he had, um, I think flames or something. And I mean, this is like, you know, 29, 30 years ago or something like that. So I can't re really remember what I um, reworked for him. It's probably flames and smoke or something, but he had originally got it on tour somewhere. And then when he came back home, he wanted me to fix it up, recolor it and stuff. Um, which I did, which is cool. And we got to be, um, I don't want to say like best friends or anything, but we were like, you know, good acquaintances. I mean, I was invited to his house and for the July parties and stuff. And that's really cool. And I must say he is a class act because I've been to different rock and roll parties, but he had a really nice house in Monroe. I don't think he owns it anymore. I think he sold it, but um, it was a really nice house in Monroe, Washington. It had a big pond in the back with its own island in it. That's where they shot off the fireworks for the July. And it was super clean. And he had little post-it notes around that said, this is my house. Please respect it. The recycling goes here. If you want to go see the music runs, please take off your shoes. I mean, you know, it was immaculate. And to have a 4th of July party with all these like 
hot chicks and rock and roll dudes and fireworks and shit. To see like a beautiful house that stayed beautiful <laughs> was really cool. I was like, man, this guy's classy. I like this, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. And you tattooed him. You were, you were covering up a mistake or a bad job before. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was yeah. It was just a bad job. I, it just, all the color fell out, so I was reworking some of the lines and filling in for color for him. Yeah. Was that after yeah. facelifts? Was that uh, during dirt? Do you remember what time of their career that was? Like? Uh, ooh. <laughs> I think it was after facelift. I I can't remember exactly where in their um discography that that timeline plunged but uh um but yeah they they were already they already big and on tour they already well known so yeah oh that's just awesome man but me personally i've seen metallica 38 times around the world uh, yes <laughs> allison chains i'm not too far off of that but i haven't seen lane before never had the pleasure of seeing yeah. lane uh, well he, he left us way too early way too early yes yes he did and God bless him. Uh, did you see yeah. him at any of these July Fourth parties early on? I did not. I did not. Okay. Um, he had. He had. He had passed. Uh, I can say that for sure. He had passed by the time I tattooed Jerry. So. Oh really? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Um. Well, geez, man. Like, this this tattoo is from Alpha Tattoo in Buffalo, New York. Oh, nice. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. Not- John Kostoff is a big fan of yours, and uh, this is the Lincoln Park Street Soldier. I don't know if you could. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, it's a Street Soldier. It's nice. Good. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very cool. And uh, I in 2000, I was I was 12 years old, and that was the first record that I got into music. And sure. uh, I had to get that Chester, you know, in our hearts as always. Yeah. Um, and John Kostoff is a big fan of yours, so shout out to, uh, to oh, you, nice. John. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, John. Very uh, cool. So uh, these cans behind you, what's going on, dude? So you, you collect retro oil cans? Uh, yeah, I, uh, well, I mean, I, I collect all kinds of gas station stuff, but my true love is the uh, quart-sized round metal oil cans. That's a... Uh, that's my niche. That's why. That's what I collect. That's what I spend my dough on. Um, right now, my son is, you know, twenty eight years old, so he's got his own career. I don't have to, you know, he doesn't. He's got his own money. I'm not married. Uh, I have a little dog that I feed, but he doesn't eat that much. So basically, the rest of the money I spend on oil cans, you know, because <laughs> I I love them so much, you know. Um, yeah. I think I've, uh, you know, because the amount has changed it's like changes daily because i'm always getting some in and sometimes i sell some to to make room and stuff but i think i got i think i got over 1200 quarts now you know which wow. is a lot of cans you know wow uh my late great buddy mike holden his dad john collects old school beer trays you know those beer yep. trays you could get yeah um but these these cans are these these are all of them you got back there. Where are you right now? Are you in your house or? I am in my house. This is this is basically my front room. My bedroom's in the back. My roommate uh, has got his room upstairs. It, it's basically a warehouse artist law, um, okay. and that's why I'm able to have. I mean, I think our ceilings like twenty foot ceilings or whatever. It's got big warehouse windows and stuff. But but I made this section of it um an oil can wall and it looks really striking because it's like you know you never see that many oil cans displayed you know i mean that's a ton of them you know so for your very first time, years to get them dude yeah. yeah congratulations i mean for your very first time on zoom you chose a killer backdrop man it's- oh well thank you i just uh <laughs> when when you invited me Kevin, i was like oh this will be right this is my very first time on zoom this is my very first podcast i've ever done so i was like hmm, i've got little i've got these like little studio lights that are in a little metal box i put them up so you know i, I made lighting for you and everything i'm like yeah this is gonna be great <laughs> you know boom bam. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> well that, that nice. is that is awesome so this is a rock and roll podcast yep. and uh, i'm curious i i understand you like the band clutch i'm not too familiar with clutch out of maryland but what was yep. your first you have a first show that you ever went to in new york or and- uh well the first uh, my first concert ever as a kid was blue oyster cult and i i i still love blue oyster cult you know i know they you know everyone's like oh godzilla i'm so sick of that single blah 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 what, whatever i mean blue oyster cult really rocked you know oh yeah um, they they really put on a great show and i saw them at the mid hudson civic center in poughkeepsie um 
it's she said what 80s 80s okay. you know it's probably 19 it's probably 1980 um because after i saw my first show i dove head first into it i think my second show was um uh ozzy with the uh, randy Rhodes on guitar for blizzard of oz and motorhead opened up for him and i had front row center for that one Sick. so like motorhead and blizzard of oz i mean what that that is a freaking great show you know you get some wow. great bill oh. <laughs> i was in my rock heaven then i was just like and that to have front row center i was like i i can't get any better than this you know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you got those tickets. Did you get in line for those those tickets on the floor? I had a friend. Uh, my my, I had a friend. I was actually um, helping. I I say that I was on the road crew, uh, but my friend had a punk rock band called Begging Porpoise, and I think Kenny or Ron. It was like two big brothers that did that band, and uh, either Kenny or Ron stood out at the middle of the Civic Center overnight to get those tickets, and they asked me in school like, "Hey, we're going to get Motorhead and Nazi tickets. You want one?" I was like, um, "Let me think about it." Shit, yes. <laughs> You know, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so they slept out. I actually did sleep out for Alice Cooper tickets. That was later on, though, because uh, I love Alice Cooper, too. So yeah. I did sleep out for those and I got third row center. But um, to be that close to Alice, too, that's a lot of fun. He puts on a good show, too. <laughs> yeah. Alice Cooper. I admit I have not seen Alice Cooper live, have not seen Judas Priest live. I got to scratch those uh, off when concerts come back. Yeah, there's, there's a bucket list, dude, because I love Priest and I, I've seen Priest the half a dozen times and it's it's never disappointing you always it's like motorhead and judas priest you always know what you're gonna get you know what i mean yeah. by going to the show it's not gonna be like oh maybe they'll suck no they're they're rock your face off it's awesome <laughs> yes yes they do i mean i had my first vaccination shot this week too and nice second one in a few weeks yeah so looking Good. forward to getting back in the concerts i just saw rage against the machine are moving forward with their tour with Run the oh, Jewels good. next year in 2022. So yeah, yeah. When that rolls through Buffalo. Yeah, let's, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to bands being on the road again. I, I just got, um, I DJ as well. So I just picked, I mean, I missed DJing last year, but uh, I have two favorite shows here in Seattle. One's a car show that I do in the summer and one's a Cramps cover band show that I do on Halloween. So those are my two favorite DJ shows. Uh, and I missed them last year because of the damn pandemic. But the car show is happening on August 22nd here at Slim's Last Chance, and I'm looking forward to that. We're going to be super safe. Hopefully, most people will be vaccinated by August, hopefully. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, I think people need it, I mean, because music is good for the soul. And live music is like friggin' medicine, you know. So people need people need music, and they need to socialize. So let's all try to get vaccinated and get back to, you know, somewhat normal because, you know, as humans, we really need the cat that connection, you know. Yes, yes, very mm. true. Nothing I like more than to just to tailgate a little bit, get back some beers, some friends, and go into the show and have a good old time, man. Hey, let's make memories together. Get past this dark time, definitely. Yes, yes, amen. Uh, so let's see here. Your favorite show? Well, dude, I just want to acknowledge you saw Ozzy front row. On the Blizzard yeah. of Oz tour, you saw Randy yeah. Rhodes live, man. Randy Rhodes, the lead guitarist. That, it's true, and he was amazing. But um, see, I'm not a guitarist, and I I know what I like. But um, my guitarist people tell me that he's a phenomenal guitar or was a phenomenal guitar player, and I didn't know how special that was to see him until after he had passed, and and even decades after that show, even now, and I tell people that they're like, "You saw Randy Rhodes." It's like holy shit, you saw Randy Rhodes? I was like, yeah. and, and, and I feel, you know, almost like guilty about it. Like, oh uh, yeah, I did. It was awesome. But because a lot of people that wanted to see him never did, you know? So it's like, almost like a guilty pleasure, you know? It's like, yes, I did. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. You know? Like, yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I got to see that. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another way of approaching it. Yeah. <laughs> right. But you, you DJ. So are yeah. you, you're, you're, scratching what kind of music I, no i don't do any of that I, I i do that at the end if i want to get people to leave but most of the <laughs> stuff that i yeah most of the stuff that i play is like rock and roll old blues um garage rock like sonic style um you know i i pay you know i don't play a lot of house music or trippy trance or or uh, hip-hop there's nothing wrong with that i i like all different kinds of genres of music and i like them for different reasons at different points and different emotions in my life or moods you know 
Um, sometimes you just got to wake up and, and put on Motorhead Loud, but sometimes mornings I don't want to do that, you know? So um, I like all genres, but yeah, I don't, uh, I don't play any of the, those uh, common DJ scratchy type genres at my shows. It's like, <laughs> you know, punk rock, heavy metal, uh, old blues, you know, good old country, nothing new, you know, it's like, so I, I, I the place where I do these shows is at a biker bar. So I can basically play anything I want and I know what they like to hear. So I, I do it, you know, <laughs> awesome. any Metallica yeah. you play there. I do. I've, I've, I've known to play Metallica and some more obscure, uh, obscure metal stuff. Like I, I like a band from Germany called destruction, you know? So I've, I've played some, yeah, some really weird, obscure speed metal shit, but I try to mix it in a, in a pleasant way because you can't please everybody. Um, I think if I played speed metal the whole night, I'd, I'd lose the followers, but um, I also don't like to play one genre the whole night because it just, it bores the F out of me. I want to mix it up and have everybody have a good time and still have chicks come up, you know, to the booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, head cheese, man. Uh, yep. Tell us about the sound of head cheese when you were playing down there in Tucson. That's a really yeah. funny name for a band. I mean, I could imagine. Yeah, no, that, you know? head cheese is, uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, when I went uh, to Tucson, it was uh, Scott Mogey and I and uh, our, brother, our, our brother, Chris, our friend, Chris, uh, and we were doing like just getting really stoned and doing four track work, you know, and all this crazy weird shit. And Scott's a really good guitarist. So, and, and Rat was, or Chris was a drummer. And I would just get stoned and do all weird vocals and digital delays, pitch trippers, you know, all this weird <laughs> shit. Um, but then we actually got um, a touring band. Like, you know, we got, you know, my buddy Eric on bass and we had Chris and uh, Larry on drums. So we had two full drummers, you know, two full kits um and scott and uh, me on vocals i did vocals and uh tape loops and manipulations and uh uh like digital delay and you know sound effects type shit and most of the time i was naked so you know i think we we're charging five six eight bucks to get in you know you see a fat cat heavily tattooed naked guy at least that, that even really? if the music sucks right you know <laughs> so yeah i mean i'd wear like a leather cod piece that said master shit like that you know people <laughs> you know I, we our first show was supposed to be opening up for gore but gore actually canceled because they smashed all their props in texas so we did have a show that night it was just in our friend's backyard and no gore but i thought that would have been a great pedigree like oh you're you're bad you know what, what's the first time you played open it up for gore that would have been killer you know yes but, yeah, alas but... it did not happen <laughs> you know well, that's that's awesome are you found are you can we find you on youtube is there uh any audio i think there might be a i think there might be a couple things on youtube but uh there might be other head cheese stuff too but i think eric put up a couple of things on youtube and marked it head cheese old tucson punk rock or something so it's got to have like tucson and punk in it and the, the head cheese will come up i okay. mean we did song i think the the going to uranus video is on on youtube and it's got i stayed up all night on freaking marching powder the night before i made this big rocket suit for this video and i come bursting out of a rocket suit going to uranus you know like <laughs> you know classic classic stuff you know <laughs> i'll include whatever head cheese i can find i'm gonna include it in the description below for for anyone that's interested uh <laughs> that's that's great so when you're tattooing well for yeah. me well for me with that when i get this piece a few months ago it's so sick i mean I, I wake up and i look at it man it's like it still trips me out like holy shit i mean isn't it, isn't it fun look waking up and seeing something new i think that's yeah. why people continue to get tattooed because you'll like enjoy that for the rest of your life but you'll go huh i kind of want something new to look at and then you'll get something <laughs> new i mean listen kev i had to become a dealer to support my habit you know what i'm saying you know? <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i mean i'm starting to spark up ideas maybe bruce lee next time i'm in seattle you know bruce lee yeah, seattle will be a good place to get it brother and i'm here for you <laughs> he uh yeah he uh He's got one of my favorite quotes. We're talking about quotes. Uh, let's see. Um, freedom finds you the moment you lose. Freedom finds you the moment you forget about the impression you're making or about to make. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. He was a major in philosophy, and uh, yeah. that's great. So what music do you play when you're tattooing? Do you just go all over the place, the punk rock and the country and stuff? Yeah, yeah, we have, uh, I think, uh, what do we have? Um, what are the two, Pandora and Spotify or whatever. And, you know, yeah. well, there's there's other artists at the shop. So 
we put on uh, Pandora radio and different, different things, you know, um, and it changes throughout the day, you know, okay. so it just depends on other artists. I mean, we pretty much listen to everything. The only things that we don't really listen to in the shop is some um, stuff that's got like uh, offensive stuff or, you know, for our clients. Like if it says the N word and F you throughout the whole thing, we don't really want to broadcast that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we kind of try to keep it to interesting music that the public, you know, won't be offended or write a bad review about, you know, and there's plenty of music that doesn't swear through it. That's just as groovy, you know? <laughs> so I got to ask, uh, how many butt cheeks have you tattooed in your day? Oh man. I don't even know because I did. I never counted them. I never <laughs> counted them all. Uh, I, I'm going to use a college word here, a plethora of butt cheeks, a plethora. Okay. Yeah, several. <laughs> all right. Is several. That... Plethora. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't think I asked John Kostoff this at Alpha Tattoo, but what is the most painful place in your body to get a tattoo? Well, I mean, that's a, a subject of uh, some argument. I mean, some people, I can tell you personally what was most painful on me, uh, me getting tattooed. Sure, sure. Uh, I do not like, I've got a rib cage piece. I do not like it the way it feels on my rib cage. It hurts like hell. And for me, the center of my sternum, right down the middle of my chest is like owie kazowie, you know, that's, that's a hot spot. And uh, I have a whole full back piece and over the kidneys, not, not tramp stamp area, but kind of side lower area where your kidneys might sit. That's a, that's a, that's a hard area too. <laughs> right. Well, I'd ask Hey, you know, you, you, you live to tell about it and the pain is temporary. So uh, you get something groovy. And I tell people, they're like, man, you're covered. I'm like, yeah, I know. Got to grow more skin. I got to get some more, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to ask you to, to take your shirt off, but would you, would you get it on your, uh, what you get tattooed on your sternum in your chest? Well, I have a little piece, but it's, okay. <laughs> It's kind of funny. It kind of looks like Ozzy's chest piece a little bit. It's got kind of like a big Japanese demon face, but it, some of the hair travels over my sternum. And I'm like, oh, when he was doing that, my roommate did it. My Ken was doing that. I was like, oh, yeah, that'll wake you up in the morning better than coffee. Holy crap, that hurt. <laughs> but it doesn't hurt anymore, so that's good. Have you ever tattooed yourself? Uh, once a long, long time ago. I think I was in Tucson in the 80s just I, I did it just because I wanted to see you know just because I never did it before um I, I think it comes out better if somebody else I like personally I like to relax let the other person tattoo me you know <laughs> right right oh is there a is there a spot that you prefer to tattoo on like what's your what's your any part in the body like what's your wheelhouse when you when you tattoo on yeah something? I mean I'll, I'll tattoo pretty much pretty much anywhere I mean I I have to explain things to clients like if you want stuff on your fingers like it's a problem area for healing and you might need a touch up that kind of thing uh most of the time fingers need touched up mine mine have been going over three times and they're still not perfect but they're perfect enough for me because i won't be going over them anymore it hurts you know yeah I <laughs> but uh, yeah pretty much anywhere and i always thought it was weird when people requested their genitals tattooed like really <laughs> i mean i've i've done them i've done both male and female genitals and i'm like <laughs> I, why in the world would you want something there? First of all, it never looks that great because it's kind of a membrane type area. It yeah, never looks great. really clean. It looks looks crappy, but it's more of a novelty. Like, hey, I've got a tattoo in my, you know, <laughs> you know, kind of a more of a novelty thing, you know. You know, you really remind me of uh, one of my closest friends here who's also a twin. I have a twin brother that lives in Athens, Greece. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, there's, nice. there's five pairs of twins in my family, and uh, me and that Ryan is a twin here. family. That is wonderful. We have a twin family, but you really remind me of my buddy Dan Stahl, um, and he'll he'll watch this episode. And I don't think he's got any tattoos, but uh, well, there's still time, Dan. Come see me in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you've done Jerry Cantrell. Any other rockers or musicians or celebrities that you've tattooed? Hubba -hubba? Sure. Sure. Uh, I'll just, I'll stick with the musicians because this is a rock and roll podcast. Uh, um, Dave, I, I always mess up his last name, but Bruzio from Pearl Jam, the original drummer. Oh, actually, yeah. I was, uh, yeah, Dave Bruzio, Bruzio, uh, Bru or something. Yeah, I, I yeah, guess. something like that. He was a, a, the original drummer for Pearl Jam. So I was the, actually the guy who tattooed the very first stick man. You ever, you, you're familiar with the Pearl Jam like stick dude? Yes, sir. Well, I tattooed it on Dave, and um, he's the first guy that ever got it. I've tattooed it probably 
50,000 damn times since then you could be in here in Seattle but uh he was the first one to actually get that tattoo um and it was really really cool because um he's a super nice guy first of all a super nice guy got along with a great and he was very sweet he actually came back with a bunch of Pearl Jam signed stuff because when I do musicians that are you know that I like I, I asked you know I said well you know I have a little time capsule that I put all this uh, sign stuff in for my son when he's older he can open it up and go oh my dad gave me all this cool sign shit you know i thought yeah I got kind of a little cool thing for my son to open later you know um so we did he brought all that stuff back but the thing that actually tickled me the most um was seeing it on mtv seeing like P pearl jam video on mtv and actually seeing the tattoo that i did on mtv i was like oh wow. my god i think i've I think I've made it big or I'm like, yeah. either I've made it big or I'm riding the coattails of this guy that made it big, you know? Yeah. Like, Damn right. Really amazing drummer. Yeah. 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 Oh, he's great. He's an amazing drummer. Yeah. Did you create that stick man or? I did not. That I, I don't even know who did somebody, either somebody in the band or somebody they knew did and they used it. Um, okay. Hmm. I don't know. I can, I can, not that it does me anything now, but I can ask my friend Rob. My friend Rob does like works for them. So he, he okay. my friend Rob from Coffin Break. Coffin Break's another local. It's a punk rock band, but he works for Pearl Jam now. So I can ask him. But anyways, yeah. yeah. Any other rockers that come to mind? Uh, or celebrities? Well, those, are the two, those are the two big, big popular ones. I mean, I've you know I've done lots of you know local musicians that you know don't have a national name or anything. But uh, sure. those are the, definitely the two big ones. That you know Jerry and and Dave are the two big ones definitely awesome man awesome and your son uh is dakota right is that it correct? is yeah he's dakota and i gotta give him a shout out he made parenting easy because you never and when you have a child you don't know how they're gonna turn out and <laughs> as he was growing up when he wanted a black leather jacket and he said that he liked the ramones and motorhead and music like that i was so happy it could have been it could have been it could have been very bad you know it could have been really shitty music and and want to wear a polo or something you know he wants i don't know and he, at least he's a cool mf and i'm happy you know like he made yeah. parenting easy i'm like oh yeah rocker i cannot i i was so tickle pink when he was 21 and i went out to a bar and had a beer with my boy you know it was cool it was fun that's awesome i man. took you him know. to his first concert his first concert was war and he looked at me <laughs> after the show covered in shit and he looked at me he said hey dad thank you for taking me to see war I'm just kind of wondering how the hell you're going to top that. I was like, I don't know. I just started you out real good. See, I don't know. <laughs> well, his first concert was Gore. My first concert in 1998 was the Backstreet Boys. Uh, oh, well, I think yeah. he won. Sorry, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> <You are>. Yeah. <laughs> but, and he moved to Texas? No, 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 no. He's uh, he's here. He works at the UW uh, hospital. He's a, he's a registered nurse. Oh, okay. So he was helping me pack those paintings to shipped to a client in texas gotcha. he was just helping me pack those yep yes i see, I see. Yep. all right well yeah. man this month is uh the month that allison chains is releasing their facelift box set nice uh, 31 years old that record and i wanted to bring on some folks from back in the day and yeah you know, one of them and turns out that i really fucking dig your work and well thank you i appreciate it Hey, and I, I, Kevin, I appreciate the invite to do this. It's been a, been a real honor to talk to you. And uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you for letting me do this with you. This Special. My fled. Thank you, man. It's just my little fledgling kind of uh, rock and roll time. I take my real estate hat off and I just get to talk a little bit with my heroes and people I admire, including yeah. yourself. Oh, and well, thank you. You know what? You got to, you know, I, I've always, I know it's probably cliche, but I've always said, like, if you dig your, what you're doing, it's not like working. You know what I mean? Yes. And I dig what I do, so I don't really feel like I work, even though it's work. You know, I I, I really dig it. And you, you know, I wouldn't call it a fledgling podcast. You're you're having a good time. You got to follow that, man. You got to keep doing what you're doing. And uh, and I back you all the way, Kev. Thank you so much, brother. And and yeah. cheers for the next thirty six years and in, in of your career in tattooing. And well, thank uh, you, sir. Yeah, we'll we'll cheers to that right now. And and yeah, we will. All right. <laughs> thank you so much god bless man and uh mm -hmm. next week i've got paul rockman coming on he's the music video director of man in the box and cowboys from hell pantera wow and wow. temple the dog hunger strike 
you know, wow. and so on and suicidal tendencies and sepultura and the list goes on. So, um, well, I'm honored. That's quite a pedigree list. I, you know, I feel, you know, I, I hope I lived up to some kind of, you know, podcasting for you because uh, those are big names and I'm just a fat tattooer from Seattle. <laughs> no, man, it was, it was a true pleasure and uh, stay happy, stay healthy, stay hungry and stay heavy, brother. You know it. Thank you, Kev. All righty. See you, hubba hubba. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Bye.